To the outside world, Moby Dick was the personification of death and malice. Truly the most ferocious whale to ever swim the seas, and feared by many. On the inside, however, Moby was a whale few had seen before. An intellectual scholar, an avid cheese connoisseur, a true renaissance whale. But life was never easy for Moby. After a childhood plagued with social awkwardness and recurring eating disorders, Moby faced adversity wherever he swam. And in the end, this public misconception led to the tragic disappearance of Moby Dick, the White Whale. Moby's longtime friend, Virginia Willey, grew up with Moby and helped him through many of his problems. <laughs> However, matters became much worse for Moby one fateful night in the Christmas season of 1832 when both of his brothers failed to return from their daily hunt. Just two days after Christmas, word reached Moby and his family that both of his brothers had in fact been murdered by whalers. Later that night, Moby and his father got into a disagreement. With emotions amongst the dicks already at critical mass, that was the final straw. Moby left. For good. <laughs> Nothing was heard of Moby for a considerable time. But slowly, rumors began to surface. Sightings had been reported in the Atlantic, the North Atlantic, the Antarctic, and even the Pacific. But little did the world know that in this period of absence, Moby had become better, faster, and stronger. He had overcome his eating disorders, and was now ready to exact his revenge upon the whaling community. And as for those who, previously hearing of the white whale, by chance caught sight of him, in the beginning of the thing, they had every one of them, almost, as boldly and fearlessly lowered for him as for any other whale of that species. But at length, such calamities did ensue in these assaults, not restricted to sprained wrists and ankles, broken limbs, or devouring amputations, but fatal to the last degree of fatality. Those repeated disastrous repulses all accumulating and piling their terrors upon Moby Dick. Captain Archibald Boomer of the Samuel Enderby experienced these terrors firsthand when he encountered Moby Dick in 1843. Well, he took my bloody arm. He's a ferocious leviathan, that one. Absolutely ferocious. I'm just lucky to get away with my life. You'd have to be bonkers to go after him. Stark raving mad. Others had experienced the wrath of Moby as well such as Captain William Ahab of the Pequod. How do I feel? He took my leg, for God's sakes. How do you think I feel? I want his heart on a platter, the devil beast. I want him dead. I want him, I want him to feel my vengeance, my pain. I want to gouge out his eyes with my harpoon. And so, but leave one so he can look me in the eye as he dies, as I plunge it into his heart and say, it was me, I got my revenge, you bastard. Well, after the incident, he was never quite the same. In fact, he went mad. Well, most whalers turned away from the pursuit of such a ferocious leviathan, 
Ahab's encounter had only strengthened his drive to capture Moby. On my next voyage, I intend to kill him. Kill the damn beast of the dark black abyss! But Ahab's mind was set, and so he continued, choosing not to heed the warning of his fellow captains and crew. I gammed with the Pequod just a few days before they encountered the White Whale. I told them to chase the whale would be folly, but they did not listen to me. Truly wise and ill-fated voyage. Not a soul encouraged us to continue. Just days later, Ahab and Moby came face to face once more. After a heated battle, Ahab was sent to his watery grave. That whale, it destroyed my husband. It ruined his life and ruined mine. Since that last fatal encounter, sightings of Moby Dick have gone down significantly. But without any evidence to the contrary, Moby Dick is still out there somewhere, swimming beneath the waves.